Hello, my name is Emily Dunn, and I would like to thank the Edinburgh Admissions team for requesting this personal statement of mine. I was initially drawn to Edinburgh specifically because it was a university outside of my home country. I believe that as a psychologist, I have the duty to go outside my comfort zone. To conduct thorough and accurate research, it must be generalizable, and that cannot be done within one's own geographic location exclusively. Another reason that I am drawn to Edinburgh is for the emphasis of application. I have come to the conclusion that for psychology, especially forensic psychology, for there to be excellent progress made, you must have a good balance of theory, research, and practical application. Forensic psychology ties in so closely with the criminal justice system and public policy that for there to only be theory about research and what can be done to improve policy that will affect people's lives indefinitely, that is simply not enough. We need application as well. And I'm glad that Edinburgh offers that. As far as forensic psychology is concerned, I am keenly interested in the consultation side of things. I would like to work with law enforcement officers in personnel training, as well as coping mechanisms as to how to deal with their stressful environments. For criminology, I would like to work with both criminals and victims in the developmental sense. How did they get where they are now? And what can be done to undo this process of criminality or victimization? As I mentioned before, good psychology needs both research and application, and research is where I come into play. In the spring of 2015, I published my first research article titled The Pedestal, How Those in the Role of the Hero Stay Focused and Balanced. What I did was I took two seemingly very different occupations, psychologists and law enforcement officers, and I compared their stressors and how they coped with the stress. Now, there were a lot of differences, but what the similarities were that I noticed was social scrutiny and how to deal with that. Psychologists, as forensic psychologists especially, are so often called to the witness stand to be expert witness in court cases. Oftentimes, their decision is not popular. Their objective opinion is not popular because it is such an emotionally heated event. For law enforcement officers, the way they handle their work and assailants and criminals is often frowned upon as well. In dealing with social scrutiny, both psychologists and law enforcement officers had two main things they did. They compartmentalized, which is when you're at at work, there is no other life, and when you are with your family, there is no work. And they emphasized the extreme importance of a tight-knit, loving family. And this was evident in the interviews that I conducted. I spoke to psychologists, law enforcement officers, and the FBI, local campus police. All of them talked about their family incessantly as it was the most important thing to them to deal with seeing the darkest side that humanity had to offer. Psychologists experienced the same thing. The pedestal, this research study that I conducted, I hope to generalize it and to replicate it in my postgraduate degree. I would like to replicate the study and conduct it once again, and this time have more time for data analysis, more in-depth interviews, and ideally some case studies. My personal goal is to humanize law enforcement officers and psychologists and create a better social atmosphere for them. Currently, my research that I'm working on right now is my undergraduate thesis, Blue is the New Black, How Mental Illness is Being Romanticized by Popular Culture. This is veering away from forensic psychology. However, it is my opportunity to delve into psychology as a whole. In my thesis, I assert that due to the well-meaning intent to end the stigma of mental illness, popular culture, i.e. films, social media platforms, are bombarding society, especially impressionable young people, which I am defining in my thesis as age 13 to 22, with unrealistic um, expectations and idealistic romantic images of mental illness. For example, shows like 13 Reasons Why, is depicting depression as something to be tragically beautiful, which it certainly is not. 
13 Reasons Why also presents a horrifically gruesome and graphic suicide scene, which in turn is creating the idea among young people that suicide is the ultimate revenge for those who have wronged you and is certainly not. Other aspects of the effects of romanticizing mental illness has been seen in countless articles that I've read of young people witnessing their peers fetishizing and using issues such as depression and anxiety as accessories to spark or beef up an otherwise lacking in depth personality that they would have without lacking that mental illness. Currently, there's nothing to be done for this trend of romanticizing mental illness as we stand now. However, I would like to assert that this thesis creates a platform for further research with more time for further data analysis, in-depth case study, and more interviews. Interestingly, this phenomenon is not a one-time deal. In the Victorian era, tuberculosis was romanticized as well, a physical illness. It was seen as the young, dying, beautiful artist's disease as it created pale skin, extreme weight loss, or consumption as your body is being wasted away, and of course, the iconic coughing up of blood. This was looked at with a macabre beauty. I assert in my thesis that this was because there was a lack of understanding. Doctors and laymen alike did not understand what was going on with tuberculosis entirely until much later in the era. Now, with mental illness and the romanticization of it, it is the same thing. We don't know what to do with it. We don't know how to handle it. And so, in the well-meaning intent to destigmatize, the stigma, of course, being due to misunderstanding, we now, in a opposite turn of events, romanticize the illness. In conclusion, I look forward to working with Edinburgh, with application, and with research. I believe that my research experience can provide a good application in the law enforcement setting, and also with victimization and with criminal study as well. I thank you for your time, and I look forward to your response.